Hello, sir. Welcome back to the real world with 75K to boo. How are you doing right now? I'm doing pretty solid right now. How are you? I'm I'm doing well. Pretty solid is putting it mildly. Uh, though it seemed like thinking of pretty solid, your legs turned to jelly when you found out that you had won America's favorite house guest for the season. I mean, I got to start with how surprised were you? You hear it's you, it's Matt, it's Sari in yeah. the running. When your name gets read out, I mean, the shock was clear on your face, but talk me through your emotions in that moment. I, you know, th I still don't have the words. Uh, I'm going to try, though. Um, you know, Big Brother has been my favorite television show since 2001. I mean, I remember laying on the floor watching all of it and just falling in love with the game. Um, and, you know, for fans of my favorite show um, to name me their favorite player of the monumental 25th season is... Oh, what a, what a, it's so humbling. Uh, what an honor. Um, I can't believe it. I cannot say thank you. Thank you. Thank you enough. And I don't know who had the most big part in even getting my name out there as much as possible, but I cannot believe that I was named the favorite player of this season. What an amazing season too. Yeah. Well, let's talk about the end of it because of course you were one of the five votes for Jag. Now, when you left the house, you were really saying like, I'm voting for Matt. I'm voting for Jag fugitives until yeah. the end. Were you leading towards voting Jag coming into the finale? Was there something said in like the speeches or the Q&A that had you voting Jag? At what point did you decide you were putting his key in the box? I told Jag that I was going to vote for him before I left the house. Mm -hmm. I, I knew then, I was like, man, if you make it to those chairs, and I said, if everything that we've talked about and the plans that you and I have put, to, like the plans that you have, that you've let me in on and let me see, I said, if those work out and you make, your, make it to the final chair, I said, you absolutely have my vote. I said, you just got to get three more. So once you make it that far, you got me, dude. And so, yeah, no, I was, uh, like I said, when I put the key in the boxes, I told the man uh, about a month ago that I was going to vote for him. So here it is. <laughs> now, what's interesting is uh, there was an interview with Dr. Will where he talked about how this was one of the most heated jury deliberations he's ever been a part of, that there was so much back and forth. You know, there were periods where we all had to like cool down and walk away. We didn't get to see any of that. So I would love to hear from this insider perspective, what was your POV? from yeah. that day of talking back and forth, assumingly between Jag and Matt? I, you know, I'm a pretty calm guy when it comes to the heat of battle stuff. Um, so the only times we really had to break was for planes or sound stuff or whatever, just normal activity. Um, the only heat that really came was between Felicia and Sari. Every now and then it was between Sari talking her piece to Corey. And me and Blue in America never really got thrown in really hard in the mix there. Um, we're a very opinionated group. Now we try our best to, to curb our thoughts and, and to be kind to one another because we're family. We've lived together for three months now, um, you know, but, but thoughts and emotions are going to come out when you, whenever you feel like you've gotten wronged. And the, the only part that came through uh, was the fact that Felicia was so fresh out of the house. Now the rest mm -hmm. of us in the jury had had the opportunity to come to grips with what had happened to talk to each other about, you know, our moves, what we did in this moment, who said this, when, who lied to who, why'd you do that? Who are you really on the outside? So we all had a moment to kind of, to kind of circle the wagons and get to know each other and what we did in the game. Felicia was still fresh out of the house and she had a lot of questions that she had for us and a lot of thoughts and opinions going into it that we were like, that's not really the way that it was. So she kind of went into it with a little, little hot head and I don't blame her, you know, she just didn't know mm -hmm. a lot. So had we had an opportunity to talk in the jury house prior to the, prior to, uh, you know, the round table, you know, we, we probably would have went into it with fresher heads, but you know, Felicia is a very opinionated person. So she's going to say everything that she wants to say. And, and, uh, Corey, you know, definitely has to let people know how smart he is. So it happens. Well, from that perspective, I mean, you were the first member of the jury and you had what I would say maybe some not so friendly faces uh, coming in, you know, that you were greeting as the four person of the jury house. From our perspective, it seemed like, you know, you all were getting on on friendly terms. But what was that like? Because you're sort of like out of the game, but not out of the game because you're still voting for someone in the end. Did you get a sense as people were joining the jury that things were kind of let go or were there still tensions there? You know, understanding Matt and Jag's uh, kind of roadmap for the rest of their game, I could kind of map out who was going to come into the house next. I could kind of see what was happening in the landscape of who was going to win this, when they're going to come in. So, yeah, I tried I, I tried to kind of predict moods coming into the house and how people were going to be upset. Once Corey came in, everything was 
good. We had an opportunity to sit down and talk about a bunch of stuff. And he and I didn't have a lot of stuff to hash out. It was really just, who are you? Are you cool? Are we cool? What's going on? And then once we got there, we're like, all right, man, let's go shoot pool, have a beer or something like hang out, you know, um, you know, when blue and America showed up, Corey and I had predicted a double. So we weren't shocked. Um, I know Corey was happy to have America come in the house. So the two of them kind of did their own thing. It left me and Blue to kind of hang out, just read books and chill and, and shoot the shit and, and uh, you know, cook together and, and kind of hang out with with the other, you know, sequester managers, the people that are, that are there with us. We had the opportunity to kind of just relax. Mm. Um, so there was no tension in the house. Uh, Jerry House was pretty cool, pretty chill. Sari coming in, she was a little bit of a firework, uh, but after a night of ch chilling with her and hanging out and, and, and letting her just kind of relax, woke up the next morning everything was just like family again. And we just kind of hung out and waited for the next moves. So the jury house was fireworkless. Um, and it was actually pretty, pretty cool to hang out with everybody and kind of see that side of everybody. I'm intrigued. Did you get the sense going into the finale that like the votes were on Jack? I know that your vote didn't get changed necessarily by the Q and a or the speeches or anything, but did you have a feeling that things were up in the air between these two guys? Should they make the final two? I thought it was pretty pretty solidly in favor of Jag moving in. I was a little bit taken back by Sari and Foolish's vote. And then after I thought about it a little bit more, I was like, ah, you know, it makes sense. You know, Sari said everything whenever she talked about the fact that she's extremely loyal. Um, and I knew that her vote for Matt was something that she based on loyalty, um, even though it should have been based on her opinion of the greatest player in the game. And she she gave some pretty solid arguments for Matt, but I know that she and I had talked about it. We understood that Jag made the absolute most moves between the two of them. So he was deserving of the win. Um, as for why Felicia voted for Matt, I'm not necessarily sure. I mean, I, uh, she kind of proved me right in that sense where I knew she probably wasn't going to vote for the absolute winner, the person that deserved it the most. And in my opinion, that was Jag. Um, so I knew that her vote was, was uh, interesting at best, but it didn't shock me. Talk to me about uh, your relationship with America, because there were certainly some comments before, you know, you both entered the jury house about how, you know, we want to vote Corey off before he makes the jury so that you and I can be in the jury house. There were some spare comments that may have been made about, you know, how you might not be able to control yourself around her. It was a very unique relationship that we certainly gleaned over the feeds. Can you talk to me a bit more about that now that the season's done? Oh, listen, um, America and Corey, two amazing people. They're great. Great people. I love playing the game with them. Um, I uh, I had a sense that that America's game was a bit flirtatious moving in. So in no way, shape, form uh, was I trying to get in the middle of any of that between her and Corey. Um, I just I leaned into a little bit of the the flirtatious stuff and uh, tried my best to play that game. And it worked in my favor a few times because she was a big proponent of my game and 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 definitely fed me information that she should not have fed me and uh, went to bat for me for a few people that she probably shouldn't have gone to bat for me for. So um, did it work in my favor? Yes. I don't know how it's all going to be perceived or viewed, but um, no, she's a great friend of mine. And I hope that, that we remain friends outside of the house. Last thing I want to ask, there's this really interesting clip from the jury roundtable where Suri is sitting right next to you. And she's like, uh, you know, Cameron didn't have a great social game. And you're like, yep, that's true. I mean, I'm super intrigued to hear how you look back on your game because, you know, you have such this interesting experience where you're winning these competitions, you get evicted, you come back, you get evicted again, and then you come through and you end up getting this, this fan favorite award as a result of just all the stuff you were doing this season. How do you look back on your experience on a big brother having this dream since 2001 come true and the journey you went on to get to this point? That is a lot of questions. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot to cover in that topic. I, uh, I, I, having, having been the big brother super fan that I am looking back on my own game, I know that I did not necessarily have a great social game. Not that I didn't want to, I absolutely wanted to, but, but the cards were against me um, as, as they were with all my favorite players that played um, and, and could overcome some of the hurdles that they had. It made it pretty hard for me um, because if, if you were ever in favor of Cameron in the house um, that made you a target. Uh, so not only was it hard for people to work with me, um, it made it extremely hard for people to be even seen talking to me. Uh, so my social game was very hard to turn on. There were aspects of it when I definitely did a lot more uh, when I came back into the game, when I was evicted and came back. 
um, I had the opportunity to have a bit more of a social game because I had planted some of those seeds during the zombie week um, and had a little bit of a, had a couple of people to lean on a little bit, not knowing how long my uh, stay was going to be. I tried to, to amp up a little bit more of my social game and I hope that that came through. Um, but no, there were aspects of my social game that were extremely lacking. Uh, so I had to agree with Sari on that one. Um, but playing as hard as I did uh, back against the wall, I knew, I knew every opportunity that I wasn't, if I wasn't uh, HOH, I was going to be on the block. And that's exactly what happened. Um, so having to work through all of those things and, and keeping, my, keeping my head, staying calm, remaining true to myself and just trying to keep my best character throughout the entire game was all I could really cling, cling to. Um, and try to be the best version of myself and make every one of the people back home that love me, uh, make them proud um, and of, of the person that I was inside of the house. And hopefully that my character shined through. And, and as I've said before, I, you know, I think Bertha was, was a pretty, was a pretty good help up there. I think the hair was, uh, took me a long way. So I can't, can't wait to see how far that gets me outside of the house.